Hi everybody, it's Mastiff, and I'm going to try and attempt to familiarize uh, some of you virtual pilots out there on how to set up your profile and your settings for your inputs on your HOTES, joysticks, and um, any other inputs I can think of. So here we go. First off, uh, go here into settings. You'll have a list here, game, interface, key mapping, input devices, graphics, camera, sound, and multiplier. Multiplayer, excuse me. Under the games tab, this controls your settings for regional, recording, or user profile, which you can interface here, which you can reset right here. So you can choose your English your different languages, Dutch, Polsky, Russian, and English. Your measurements, which is your um, feet and metrics. Feet is imperial, and then your metrics are metric. Uh, recording, so when you push your recording key in the game, in the settings, I'll show you where the recording is, the setup for that. Also, uh, if you want, if you're doing recording and you want to record the special effects and everything, you'll have to check these buttons in here too. Then you would click accept. Here I won't do it because when you click accept on some of these uh, settings, it'll cause you to have to restart the game. Flight interface. This is your little tabs, your HUD transparency, and your in-game technical tips which is that eye chat that tells you what your engine controls are over here to the right instrument panel is compact so compact means only this section will be displayed you won't see this and then mini map size is the M key for arcade playing or uh, normal not expert expert you won't have access to this and you can make this hidden compact or full compact means that it'll show up in the game as a little map and then you push the map key which is M as in Mike and you would push that and it will bring it up cooler that map is not interactive it's like a rolling map and then click accept I think this one you can just click accept and it will be uh, okay to do you can adjust your transparency settings up here also make them darker make them less visible mine's at 50 alright moving on Key mapping. Okay, so before you go in here, I would go to your input devices first. Here is your input devices. If you're using mouse or joystick, the first thing the game does is make you pick one or the other. Um, you can click on mouse and accept, and you'll have to restart the game your mouse sensitivity settings and then you have uh, joystick settings noise filter which helps uh, people that have issues with uh, jumping pointers or sensors in their joystick or throttle where it's jittery and dirty and not smooth um, you could set that here mine's at 0.02 that helps out my throttle but it still bounces around a little bit so I might just go to 3 now and see if that helps and then uh, for those of you with force feedback you would have to enable that in here and then your adjustments for shaking and feedback power key mapping okay so this is where the meat of the game is for your controls so service tab means just that anything general that you do not use on your joystick so like uh, taking screenshots F12 I set that to now a lot of this stuff is not default so just bear with me the reason why I made some of these changes is because your track IR and Steam used almost the same keys and you would have to rebind those keys because if you use them it would cause problems with third-party software such as track IR so F12 is your steam in-game screenshot 
Now on your track IR, F10, 11, and 12 are used. You can rename those um, in track IR or rekeybind them, and I'll go through that here in a second. As you can see, uh, my recording is on left control R, and then your other settings for like lobby. Looking at the lobby is what you're looking at the game score. I don't know why they call it lobby. The mission briefing is also your map key in expert setting. So O will bring up your mission briefing and your O and your map key inside the game. In game map mode. This is for arcade and normal play. So if you have normal play or you play arcade, you would use the M key. You can rebind it to the O key, so it'll make it easier for you guys that are an expert to hit the M key. You can rebind that. I key. This shows labels and markers and in-game chat. So if you turn the I key off, that will uh, turn off your labels and everything inside the game if you're playing not normal or arcade. This right control I only works for normal or arcade mode. Enter is self-explanatory for chat. <clears throat> H key hides everything. It'll hide your eye, your labels and markers, and it'll hide the, the entire HUD. Excuse me. Tilde key. That is your command radio key and uh, gestures for your AI commands. So you would use that. You hit the tilde key and it'll pull up the wizard for F2, F3, uh, I think that's it. F1, F2, F3. F1 is, think, is two tips, help, tool tips, help. And F2 and F3. F2 is for your AI wingman and F3 is for your gunners if you're flying a bomber. camera control this is strictly for your mouse and I would not change anything over here inside the default keys <clears throat> so do not change anything in here unless it has something to do directly with viewing so you would use this so like rotate camera up down left right uh, down, left down right free camera slow mode and all that stuff you can use the F11 key for that which is free camera and these work with the free camera mode player cockpit is F1 and this is when you want to when you're in recording or anything and you're viewing your playbacks and stuff left control Oh, I don't know what this is. Oh, that takes you to the enemy mode, I guess. Which that reminds me. Oh, that's left clips before, so I'm good there. Padlock friendlies, that's for people that don't use track IR. F8. People that don't use it use their POV. So, for people that don't use track IR, F8 would be your padlock. I'm not sure if it works in uh, expert mode, which I don't think it does. F4 puts you in a combat camera, uh, third person view in normal or arcade. Bomb mode, left control, F6. Not much you would change in there. This little red dot tells you, or square, tells you what's doubled up. And I wouldn't touch any of these. Because uh, your gunner uses these controls. Alright, pilot head control. You use uh, axes like I do, like track IR. I use uh, the zoom head in and out, which is this, 
but I use this on my slider on my X-52 and as you can see I need to probably adjust this more at least 50% see what else in here most of these settings are for your head control in the field of view and sitting inside the cockpit as you can see I, I removed a lot of it the ones you do not want to touch is move pilot head forward backward left right up down these are the keys that will help you center and place your field of view camera inside the cockpit where you want it and then you would uh, push the F10 key that would save that position, which is this key right here. The save current corrections in the head snap position is what saves your, your head position that you set up with the home delete keys. Insert home delete in page up, page down. In order to use that, you would ch uh, click on your pause button that you use for track IR and then once you get your head setting in there make sure your mouse isn't moving once you get your head set moved to where you want it inside the cockpit forward back uh, left right up and down by using these keys uh, and then push F10 to save that view and then re-enable your track IR and there you go but you have to do that for every aircraft main controls now you can double up controls just so you know like I have here I'll show you in a sec your plane pitch up down uses the y-axis and you can see now if they don't work in the second column here the third column is set up for your HOTAS this column over here so if you have a HOTAS that is the same, mine is not. I have an X-52 and a CH fighter stick, so I have to use the middle column because I have two different uh, and uh, SciTech rudder pedals. <clears throat> this side, if you have everything that's the same, uh, i.e. X-52, I mean, uh, yeah, your X-52, your X-55, your Rhino, uh, and then that other uh, other one that's there, and you can see that your regular settings are set here under main control for flight uh, my trim buttons are on different settings um, trim left and right on my yaw I believe is on a castle key so anything on my HOTAS is used my trim up and down is on my POV on my joystick on my CH and then the left and right roll trim Reset trim is default. My uh, adjustable stabilizer is on the up down castle key. Because those are push button, they do not use axes on the Fock Wolf. Flaps, I just use my flaps on the keyboard. Air brake is on my X52 thumb uh, button. And you have to tie those in with the air brakes for the siren because that way it works when you push them out, then the siren turns on. My gear, of course, is on the uh, default keyboard. Tail wheel lock, you got to set that. Some aircraft have that, so just remember that. Put that whatever you want it. Um, I have it on my uh, X52 left POV or right POV. Wheel brakes. 
Okay, so wheel brakes doesn't mean wheel brake lock. So wheel brakes lock are left shift W. Some aircraft have it, some don't. Wait, where is it? Here, parking brake. I'm sorry, parking brake is what I'm talking about. So parking brake is not wheel brake. Parking brakes are separate. Wheel brakes is like your handbrake in the Spitfire. Is the same for the Yak, the Lag, and I believe the IL-2 and the PE-2. All those use the wheel brakes. I believe the MIG, yeah, the MIG has the wheel brakes too. So they're using pneumatic turn <clears throat> wheel brakes. So when you push the wheel brake, first make sure you have your left or right rudder pressed which way direction you're going and then clamp on your wheel brake which I have connected to my left toe brake which coincidentally also uses the left wheel brake of the German so you don't have to assign your wheels brake if you're using the German aircraft you do not have to assign the toe tap to this it'll use this one then you assign your right wheel brake to this one and I hope you understand that because you do not have to assign it to this because if you sign this and this together you're gonna have issues left control is for those that have brakes and I think only the HE 111 has it and then your common controls for uh, the canopy the gun filter sight landing lights altimeter pressure which you'll need for the bomber and this is for the tanks then click accept make sure you do that engine controls pretty self-explanatory you have your automatic mixture controls that are not automatic for expert except for the German stuff you have your throttle and then you have your RPM for your prop pitch your engine mixture which you will have to assign um, I have it assigned to my CH fighter stick which has a axis Z and when you start your plane you gotta make sure that this is assigned and you have it turned to 100 percent supercharger mode needs to be set boost some planes have boost on the Russian side so you have to set that manual auto propeller pitch this is for 109s and the 190 and this is for 109s high pitch and low pitch and 190s I have pretty much all this stuff doubled up uh, I use manual for propeller pitch and water and oil so all those are tied in as you can see right here as it says in the little pull and if you mouse over the little box it tells you what it's tied into and so it's tied into my water radiator and I oh not manual it's not tied in it's only through the water man water radiator I have my uh, my oil separated I use the same setting my CMS up and down for high pitch low pitch which is also tied into my as you can see my RPM for the Soviet side propeller Man. equals minus equals minus it'll set it itself or reverse it the way it should be when you assign it so make sure equals means uh, to zero I think like flat and then minus is all the way open prop feathering you do have to uh, click on some of the planes the HE-111 and the BF-110 use it there's your manual auto radiator control the same for I have the same for on the uh, BF-110 the same con connections or the same settings uh, oil rads are on the same settings for my oh, not, yeah for my uh, X-52 where I have it set as you can see <clears throat> you can double these up for the same setting so you don't forget as you can see a lot of that 27 26 27 26 
and radiator shutters that's tied into my water. This is my inner cowling and cooler shutter controls tied into my water. And outlet is controlled into my water. You do not have to, if you have extra um, controllers that you want to use, you can set them up as far as engine controls inside your other engines here if you want to do that. Now you don't have to. You can use your single engine inputs on the tied in zero key for all engines or the one key for left engine number two key for the right engine just like in IL2 1946 the same settings that you can use in here goes for this version of Donald Stalingrad. Right control one uses your start engine number one procedure and then uh, right control two these are default everything else I turned off so if you want to start all your engines at once just hit the zero key and make sure your mixers forward to 100 and all your engines will start if you want to start one engine at a time click on the number one it'll show in the eye chat to your right when the, the setting comes up it'll say engine either enabled or disabled if it says disabled click on number two to make sure it's disabled and then click on one enable it again and then you can start the engine procedure start up if you want to do one engine at a time I mean I just hit the zero key make sure both engines are enabled and then I go ahead and start the the engine sequence weapons control weapons control all guns fire are tied to the space uh, weapons group one right alt space or whatever you assign it to which is my trigger key weapons group two whatever you tie it to under your joystick remember everything has got a default key in it so you don't have to tie some of this stuff in you can use your keyboard drop bombs launch rockets this part right here is very important launch rockets mode toggle so when you're gonna launch rockets you want to pair them or single you want them in single fire or pair fire so you would hit left windows right and the little eye chat will tell you which firing mode you're in same goes for dropping the bombs which is left windows bravo which I have I think mine set up to I'm not sure if that's default and that will give you single, pair, under wing, under belly, whichever settings you have, or whichever bomb setup configuration you have. Bomb bay doors are the November key. Bomb safety switch, left windows S. This turns on your, turns on and off your bomb safety switch. Goes for German side and Russian side. Reload all your guns is the R key. Ah, the water's not working. I thought I had it, so I have to push the R key on here. So some of the weapons in your aircraft, uh, if you get a jam also and your guns are firing, make sure you hit the R key. If the guns aren't firing, you can clear your jam. Also reload, like the BF-110 has a reload for the nose cannon. The gunner reloads for you, so you push the R key and then the system will tell you if it's reloading. So your, your personal weapon or flare pistol is your left control tilde key. That would activate it or deactivate it I believe. And then uh, if you want to activate it you push left control one, two, or three. <clears throat> to fire it I have the mouse left button is I think I believe de uh, defaulted. To uh, to get in the turret position, which is right here, called firing point in the current turret, left shift C if you're in a bomber and it will move you through the different various gunner positions. To take control of the gunner position, as it says here, take or leave control, T key, and to bring the iron sight up to your eye, left shift T, 
and then use your mouse to move around. Do not remove these but these uh areas. Gun range adjustment. Um, I believe that's the middle mouse button. Or the scroll button. Oh, I'm sorry. This is for the tank. This is for the tank. Same goes in there. You have to use uh, left shift C to get into the different gunner positions inside the tank. These are the quick keys for telling your gunners what to do when you're AI gunners. And I still see this attack balloons. I, I'm guessing they're going to put balloons in. I'm not sure. Uh, I deleted these because these are the keys that are tied to your third party app track IR. So I have these disabled because in, in the game, the F3, the uh, tilde key slash the F2, F3 key uh, defaulted for you to give the commands through the radio command. So you really don't need to have these tied in. Alright, orders and gestures. You really don't need to use these inside here. Um, you can delete all of them if you want. Which I have for some of them because it's it's conflicted with the track IR keys. F10, F11, and F12. <clears throat> like I said, I'll walk you through some settings for track IR. In order to not have uh, conflicting uh, assignments, key assignments with other games that you may have signed to F10, F11, F12. And I just give you a, a really easy way of um, avoiding all that. So I hope this is helpful. Push pause if you are reverse in the game or in the uh, YouTube if you need to learn any more information or slow it down if I went too fast. If you have any questions about controls, uh, go ahead and text me in YouTube and I will uh, get back to you as soon as I can. Okay, well, thanks for uh, taking the time to view this and uh, click on like if uh, you want me to see more of this kind of stuff that helps you out. Alright, thanks a lot. Camera settings. Okay, inside camera settings. This is where your speed of your field of view is changed. So if it's too fast in the cockpit and your track IR is not controlling that correctly, um, and you notice that it's too fast, here you would change your inertia and all that stuff. So my inertia, I'm going to crank this up to 90 both settings snap you and pan because I'm having an issue when I'm turning in the game that my head the gravity um, in the game causes you to move right left when you're turning the speed the g-forces is moving your head out of the view of the of the gun sight so I believe if you change the inertia at a higher percentage you should be able to stay in the uh, in the gun sight as you're turning. Field of view speed is so that you, when you're moving, turning your head inside the game, inside your cockpit, that's how fast it's going to move, <clears throat> which also is affecting in, in your uh, track IR, third party app. So um, you would also make your changes for smoothness up here. So you want to make it more smooth. Change it to 35, I'm going to boost my back up to 40 head shape not everybody likes that I like it because that tells you if somebody's if you're getting flack or anything it causes a shutter inside the game or inside your head and you see it, it this is for external view but you know what it it affects your field of view inside the game so uncheck this if you don't like that blurry high speed active when you're turning your head and all that stuff just uncheck it click accept and that'll disable that uh, weird blurriness inside the game when you're turning your head. I hope that helps out and uh, uh, hope you like and continue on watching the different uh, settings I'm going to go through here. Um, sound. Those of you that have problems with sound, you can turn your volume all the way to 100. 
This is where you would also turn off your interface sound, title music. But the only sounds you won't be able to turn off is that sound that you're hearing right now. The battle sound, the bird sounds, the, the welder sounds, you won't be able to turn that off. Turn it to the highest bit rate and that way you can be able to hear all the sounds hitting your hitting your plane make sure you push accept and hopefully that helps you out in that area now if it's too loud for you you can always alt tab out of the game I'll show you right now and you would go down here to your little speaker right click open volume mixer and look for Stormovic and you can turn it all the way down to here and that'll help out fine-tune the loudness inside the game for you and still leave you the full robust sounds of 128-bit uh, bullets hitting your cockpit, flak hitting you, the sounds of all that stuff hitting your plane and some of it still bubbled I don't know why they're not optimized but I think it's because it's an old version of FMOD that they're using and that's the problem. So if this doesn't help you out, I don't know what to tell you, but that's what I'm using and that seems to get everything robust for me. I can hear everybody hitting my plane and, and works for me. So just something for you to try. Alright, well, I hope that helps everybody out. Remember to leave some comments, suggestions, and uh, likes down at the bottom there. And any questions, leave them in the comments, and I'll get back to you as soon as I can. Thank you. Hi, guys. It's Mastiff. Uh, I'm going to do a quick little uh, familiarization with Track IR. If you have Track IR and you have uh, the latest version of Track IR, which is 5.2200 this is what you'll be doing to familiarize yourself with it and makes a few changes to help you out and make it a little bit more simple for you to understand track IR okay first of all you you have your track IR GUI interface opened here fully I have advanced settings pull down list as you can see you can pull that down with the little arrow key right here that I'm clicking on you will need this basic settings also the same thing I am I have a track clip pro I have my smoothing at 40 and my speed at 3 so the reason why I have it set like this is this cone that I have in here to limit my view or help my view out so I'm sitting centered as you can see to my monitor which is what you want your track IR LEDs to show centered in front of your monitor the camera is sitting to my left of my monitor about right here I have a uh, 32 inch um, bin Q monitor and my track IR sits about right here and then I've adjusted it for center right here in your GUI when you open it up first you want to make sure the games are updated so right here there's a game update list and you want to update so you click on this little triangle which is a pull down menu and you would update once this is done you'll need to close the GUI will close out and then restart it GUI stands for general user interface so close track IR make sure it closed it's closed and then now I'm going to open it back up My track IR is now updated. Now I'm going to use my key to center my head. You have to do that because track IR uh, obviously loses its little uh, settings here once in a while when you turn around and stuff. The precision gets off alignment. And you have to align it every once in a while. Okay, so to go into some uh, settings here, profiles, uh, I'm defaulted here. I do not have a default. I, I made default my name and then I set everything to all the titles are under my name as you can see all of them. Anything that's flight simulator or tanks or first person shooter are all under here for me. And then once I did that I went back to where the game where the GUI is located inside your hard drive 
or you have it at and I went in there and deleted the profile default that way I don't have an issue with it starting and messing up um, with uh, the default instead of using what I want it to use alright so what I was talking about earlier in uh, Battle of Stalingrad or any other third party or any other game that uses track IR and has in the game F10, F11, and F12 keys already used, you want to um, unbind this section in track IR to enable uh, you to play with your settings um, while in game and not push the game keys which correspond with track IR and start messing up your view inside the game inside the game from your track IR third party app. So what you would do is you untrap it, uncheck this, and then you would go here. This pull down list gives you the one, two, three, four pro or one, two, three settings that you would use to uh, that happen to be the same key bindings inside Steam or uh, Arma or any other game that uses F10, F11, F12 like uh, Flight Sims they do the same thing you want to change this GUI Track IR third party app you want to change the center key pause and precision and profile keys you want to re remove those from the F10, F11, 12 keys and you want to move them to something else that doesn't use inside the flight sim so what I did is you can go here click on this and double map the key so I have my right shift home as center pause is right shift insert precision is right shift page up and then profile is F8 but I since my profile is already set I don't have to worry about that and plus you wanted to say toggle it and disable it untrap it and un enable it here that way it doesn't uh, interfere while you're in the game pushing that key so if you ever wonder why your track IR gets screwed up uh, in the game it's because it uses the same key settings as the game is using for other different views and stuff like that so I hope this helps some of you guys out um, also light filter I'm gonna give you a little secret about light filtering if you have a light that's on behind you incandescent or fluorescent or if you're even wearing glasses you want to set your thresholds and uh, this is how you would do it also I think uh, I have everything my motion true view all this stuff is set in here you can adjust your field of view uh, make it more snappy are more uh, like let's say I move my head a lot so I have it at smooth three and then when I don't I, I I don't like moving my head too much to look behind me so that's why I tightened up the curve values here and that's why you see it like this I tightened up the curve values for all the axes and that way so I can all I have to do is just move my head slightly and I got a 90 degree turn as you can see my response here from top down I have not moved my head too much see there my head is barely moving my eyes only moved to to look 90 degrees to my right I moved my head maybe one eighth to look at that and then look behind me I moved my head another one eighth so you want to set this up to where it's comfortable for you to look behind you without having to move your head all the way around now in some of the flight sim games you'll have to have the Z key enabled pitch and roll in order to look behind you you'll have to move forward and then or look around you on some of the flight sims uh, because that's the way they have it set up and you're a little bit uh, a little bit uh, encumbered to look behind you so kind of like they're trying to mimicking like virtual reality or something so uh, I hope this helps out some of you guys that use track IR and uh, if you like go ahead and push like and uh, if you have any questions just drop them down there in the comment sections and I'll try to answer you as much as possible the most important thing is to make sure you are centered your camera right here 
and that your camera is sitting left to the monitor, not in the center. Because you, if you wear a Track IR uh, hat clip, having it in the center is okay. But if you wear like an LED like I do on the side of my headset, it's set up over here and it centers it right there. I hope this helps you guys out. And uh, once again, leave a like and uh, comments down there and the below in the section there. And uh, and give me some questions and let me know what you think. All right. Thanks for watching and uh, have a good day.